Hello and welcome to the ninth lecture, Periodic Boundary Conditions. So we have been continuing the discussion on molecular dynamics theory. And previously we have introduced you to the molecular dynamics ensembles. In the current lecture, we'll talk about another important uh, aspect that you apply on a molecular dynamics simulation that is periodic boundary conditions. Just a flashback, we have introduced you to NVE and VT or NPT ensemble that you apply to a molecular dynamics simulation to get its macroscopic state uh, that is similar to experimental conditions. Now, in order to pe uh, introduce periodic boundary condition, uh, what we do is that we, uh, we can imagine a cube, although I'm showing a 2D image, imagine a cube uh, in which the central cell is actually extended infinitely in all directions, X, Y, Z, uh, where all the cells is actually a copy of the uh, central cell. And uh, there are infinite images in all directions. Think about a 3D cube uh, in which the, at the center, there is a central uh, box in which the actual simulation is happening and all the other boxes are copying what is happening at the central box and there is no wall and no surface molecule. Uh, if it happens uh, for an atom to leave uh, the box from one side, it will enter the other side and it will keep the system as it was. So that's how periodic boundary conditions uh, work and uh, why it is needed because we want to know the bulk property and when it comes to only one cell it's really small and if we want to get a bulk property of a system we have to actually consider an infinite infinitesimally long system that is extended towards every direction and uh, you will see how it is applied in an input script in a molecular dynamic simulation so in the next lecture, we'll also uh, introduce another concept of energy minimization. Thanks.